Welcome again to Bionicle Commentary Central. I'm Chris Major 224, your host, here with Leo. Ball we grown all mini ball. Of course. And Keps. <laughs> Go away. And Slicer. Hey guys. Or yes, also known as Guns. He likes to be called. Also known as Guns. <laughs> His screen name is Slicer. We'll call him Guys. Do not call him. Well, don't call him Chris, because that's me. Anyways, welcome back to Bionicle Com Commentary Central. We hope you've enjoyed the last few episodes. If you have watched this episode in rapid succession with the others, great job. Thank you. We appreciate it. You, you know something, Chris? Our intro theme is actually growing on me now. Excellent. What? What do you mean? It means my pro- uh, Oh, God. I was unsure about our intro theme at first, but now I'm getting to like it. I still think it sounds terrible, but I have to use it, otherwise I'm not allowed to. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> my, my plan to take over the BCC is working. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Haha, <laughs> just teasing. Alright, so let's get to the topic on hand. Well, first off, we should mention that as of this recording, it is LQ's birthday. Hooray! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! It was yesterday. We hope you die. He just told us. He just told us. He just told us today or whatever. I don't know. So happy birthday, LQ! It was yesterday, I think. We were gonna get. We were now do big boy things. We put the articles on it with his own money. Yeah, yeah, that's the mom's money. Yay! Hang on. Drive cars. And All that fun stuff. Now, here's, here's the deal. Um, we gave LQ, we gave LQ a birthday present, the opportunity to come on the podcast, <laughs> but he had stuff to do. <laughs> hey, he I refused. Actually, like, I he actually, was just so bad about it. I, I think we should oh, take him off the BCC. Give him a break. He, he's the manager. <laughs> He is the manager. It's kind of Don't weird. lie. But you know what? You know what? If, if, it, if, it, if, it was, if it was your birthday, I would stop harassing you about the podcast for just that one day. You know what I did for LQ? I made a video for his birthday. I'm the only one here who cares about him. About his welfare. It's because he was your... Uh, not even. I care about him. It's just that public school is all a conspiracy. Back so, to the issue at hand before I uh, uh, punch something. All right. Punch so, cool. Yep. Yeah, so get so get back on tr getting back on track here. Happy birthday, LQ! Thank you for being part of the BCC. Hope you enjoy your day off. And <laughs> that made us all think, oh great, he's the guy who comes up the topics. What are we gonna do? Well, we're just gonna do something fun today. And on this one, audience participation, absolutely. Anything you think that we we'll say that. Thank you, Keps. The four people who comment, with, which is me, Gaz, and yourself, the Bob of Commerce Central channel. Now, 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 we need we need to be a little more positive about this whole ordeal, okay? Eight of our I'm just saying yeah, we don't have a live audience, so audience participation is kind of like... I said <clears throat> we need to think a little more positive. Either way... Yeah, yeah, but I have four subscribers now. Either way, people listen to this podcast... People may or may not comment on this podcast. All to say that if you ever wanted to comment on a podcast, this is the one. Because we want to know what you all think. Today, we are going to think about what would be what would uh, be the best scenario for a Bionicle movie. So here's what we're thinking. We got like Mask of Light. We had Legends of Metro New e. We had all those movies. To be honest all those though... All failures. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> And to be to be honest, I mean, it's fun for nostalgia's sake. But let's put it this way: everyone who everyone who likes Marvel and used to be teased for liking Marvel could go into a theater, show a friend the Avengers, and then they win the argument instantly. How are we supposed to do that as Bionicle fans? I can't say, "Hey, let's go watch the movie," because we make them read a lot of stories. Yeah, no one's got. We're time. better than reading fans. We're literal. You know? But we no one has time for that. No one has time for that these days. Time. People, it's because people don't make time. I have an argument about this that I'm not gonna tell right now because it's yeah, really yeah, uh, yeah. We're that's like the third time we've gotten off track. <laughs> there you go. Let's save that for BCC chat. Exactly. So 
Today we're going to talk about what it would take in order to make Bionicle into an amazing movie series. Now, Harold like Flynn. That is so... So what if he's dead? Yeah. Resurrect him? Well, first to get some conditions out of the way, and hopefully I won't be interrupted this time. <laughs> I caught you guys. Okay. But um, basically, some conditions at the beginning... Uh, we're talking about a Bionicle movie series, as in, it can be, uh, it has to be one of two movies, because that obviously makes a series. Uh, it'd be preferable for a mix of live action and CGI, but that doesn't mean we gotta throw in human people, because that would completely blow everything to pieces. We're gonna be talking about who we, who we would want to act in it, who we'd want to direct it, how we divide up the story into movies, even down to we want to sell promotional, promotional things at the theater. Basically, right now, we're pretending that we can make whatever Bionicle movie we want, we have whatever resources we want, and we're going to go ahead and do it. Gentlemen, does this sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Right. Worthy of the theme, sure. as they say in Percy Jackson. Alrighty. Dun, 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 dun. That's actually ironic, but okay. That is ironic. That also became a movie. No, I just mean that gods make terrible plans in mythology. The Greek gods do. Yeah. Specifically. There, there we go. Uh, back on top. <laughs> All right. So the first, so the first thing uh, we should discuss is the storyline. How would you divide up this gigantic storyline into different movies? Ten movies. No. Because <laughs> I mean, if it's something that you can latch onto forever, that's I mean, that's not a Lego line. Sure, ten movies. I mean, Star Wars, for example, or Harry Potter, but it's a Lego line. Harry ten Potter. movies. And to make those ten movies consistent with the sets that come out, that, no. The movies would be worse than Mask of Light if you did that. Um, and if you did it after the fact, Lego wouldn't care at all. So, not ten movies. That'd be way too many. <laughs> So would it, make, would, it make, would it make more sense to put it in one definite series, or would it be a good idea to just keep announcing new ones as they go? Like Marvel, Mar uh, Marvel has it sort of planned out, but they d they, d they don't lay, lay it out for everyone. They just keep announcing new movies as they go, and no and one seems to complain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would do that, and uh, also going off the Marvel thing, they have uh, different stories for different characters going on uh, with separate mini-series, if you will, and then every so often they'll bring them together. Lee Kong, the movie. I can see it now. Yeah, almost like that. I mean, you do have that. You have the Inaika, you have the Toa Nuva uh, at the same time as the Inaika and the Mari. You have the Toa Haga doing whatever the heck they were doing. It's and I, I think you could easily make a movie for two years at once. Say, if we started off with 2001, you could easily fit 2001, 2002, maybe even 2003 into one movie. Yeah. It would be a bit long, but It'd it would short. work. Mm. You could sense. easily fit 2004 and 5 into one movie. You didn't need to make two separate movies that all in all didn't even amount to much. Let's just say that in 2000, the only really good things that 2005 really brought us was the Viserac, Time Trap, and a bunch of really cool combiner models. Udaka as a character was okay. Yeah. Outside the movie, the movie, again, like everything else, she didn't work well. Like, I'm just looking at all these books I have. The books... So I, 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 like, me as a fan, I get the uh, background behind all the Bob movies, but, you know, if you're, like, some casual kid on Netflix and... You see a Bionicle movie and you wonder what it is, and you watch, like, Mask of Life. Nah, Mask of Life, you're not going to understand anything. Yeah, that's probably the problem. Yeah, the movies were made assuming that you already knew who they all were. The movies were not made for filthy casuals. That having been said, introduce them in a decent way that doesn't make it sound awkward. Like, oh look, it's Lua, Spirit of Air. Because I just say that every time I see you. You're just, yeah. you got that air spirit, man. Yep. <laughs> no. That doesn't happen. Okay. Takua does not refer to Liwa that way. Yeah, he'd call him Master of Air. Yeah, I can almost just imagine a... 
I can almost imagine like a Matoran film crew right there in the movie. And you got the guy, you got like a Lee Matoran to the clapperboard. And action! Okay, you need to, you need to say Tolua, Spirit of Air. Liwa! See? Director, he got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it, 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 that's how it felt. It felt scripted. So annoying. They'd be all if we we get to the, get to the Avengers. They're all Iron Man, Spirit of Wealth and Fame. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just it's ridiculous. He they'll just announce a character like that. That's the, just kind of stuff that drove me nuts. Which I'm glad we don't want to do that. An announce a character the way they should be announced, or don't even announce them. Just have them show up and announce themselves through how they act. Like, uh, Ranu? This is Masanui. Yeah, don't do that. That could almost work. <laughs> it it, it's how it could work. work, but only if you... Only if you've never heard of the person beforehand and he's trying to introduce a character the first time, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that with a character that everyone already knows about. Yeah. At least for the most part. Have them introduce themselves. Brings up kind of a side question. I was going to say this for later, but I guess now would be a good idea. Do you, how would you, a Bionicle movie series, obviously all the fans would get into it, and the fans would understand it better, but where do you even begin to introduce the series to someone who isn't a fan? Because they're like fans of, I'll use Transformers as an example, even though those movies weren't worth uh Bayformers, Chris. We refer to them as Bayformers. Bayformers. I apologize. <laughs> But people, you know, people got people got into Bayformers. I don't know how, and they had no clue what e what everything was. They wouldn't be able to tell apart an Autobot from a truck. I don't know. <laughs> that was the best. That is the worst. I'm actually, trying to make a point. I don't know the fandom enough. Yeah, exactly. See, like I'm one of those people. I will, I go. I'm ahead. a trans fan, Chris. Leave it to yeah. me. <laughs> You know what, uh, quick side story, SW made, uh, me and Riddle Hater go watch Transformers 4 in theaters. Sorry, Bayformers. Because... It's the worst movie ever. That's exactly why we watched it. We just felt like a really it awful movie. Right. So we, we, we went, we came, we watched, we laughed, it was ridiculous. But I was thinking about, how do you, how do you get someone who isn't into the Transformers fandom to, uh... You know, understand the storyline, get the idea behind the Autobots and Decepticons. What would you do with the same thing with Bionicle? How in the world do you get people to understand the, you know, Toa Makuta conflict? Well, the way Kepler's would have you do it, and I could talk about this since he's not here, is he would start <laughs> you all at the very beginning with the Dream Plague. That's not the way I think it should go. I think it should start like in 2001. You have canisters arrive on the beach. That's how a movie should, a Bionicle movie should be introduced. So go all the way back to the beginning? Well, this is kind of in the middle of the yeah. actual timeline, but yeah, the beginning. Yeah, well, I guess, in a sense, it would mean the beginning of the, uh, what you call it, of Lego's work. Bon yeah, Bionicle as we know it. <laughs> Which back makes sense. Matanui was a... Or rock like Transformer and Smashes Planets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could have a whole video on a Bionicle, uh, what do you call it? Preliminary work, art thing. Prequels? Yeah. Yes, Not prequels, but... Like never mind. Beforehand stuff. Back on, back on talk, topic. <laughs> talk. <laughs> I can't speak. Spleak. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yes, that's what I do. I think by the end of this, we won't have a Bionicle movie, but we'll have a hilarious podcast. Yeah. Crickets, crickets, crickets. So I actually thought of something for a movie, but I was kind of thinking this in my head. Uh, who was the director for Guardians of the Galaxy? I forget his name. James something? Um, I'll quickly look it up. I think it's like a James Gunn. James Gunn. Yeah, James, James Gunn. Something like, oh. something like that. Yeah, something I remembered about the animation that... Um, that I want to do. <laughs> Animate the Matoran universe residents set accurate. Because, you know, they're robots. Yes. Spray yes. stuff inside. Animate the Spherus Magna residents more organic. 
because they're not robots with squishy stuff inside. Hmm, that's interesting. Look at like look at uh, the Legend Reborn. They're all very set accurate, despite them all being mammals with armor. That's why I like. Look at armor Mask armor of Light, and they accurate. all look like aliens, despite them being robots. And they look nothing like the sets. <laughs> Absolutely. Did I do something with that? I think we did. Oh well. You did in the Mask of Light, uh, honest trailer. This was supposed to be subtle. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Yeah, it was subtle. It was so subtle you didn't catch it. Anyway, as I was saying, if uh, like, like you're going to have a theatrical movie about 2009, I think that James Gunn could pull it off, since you know he did it with Guardians of the Galaxy, and no one knew what Guardians of the Galaxy was. I think he'd also be a good job directing the next Transformers movie. But anyway, that's just, that's another conversation. Mm -hmm. Wait, they're making another one? Yeah. Could they stop with that terrible, terrible Well, Michael Bay series. won't be directing it. Gunformers. Well, just, just, just throwing that in it there. It breaks the laws of physics so much that it hurts my head. Well, let's uh, rant about that. This is not the uh, rant uh, rant about Transformer movie podcast. Yeah, let's we'll save that for another time. But James Gunn would be anyway, a good director. So I guess let's quickly se segue into directors, because I'm assuming we'd have different directors for different movies, right? Yeah. Makes sense? Well... Right. Who would be your picks? Let's see. Well, I, already I said think I'd do Steven Spielberg for 2006 <laughs> and 2007. He's kind of an more of an executive producer now, but... Yeah, I guess. That, that's true. Still. Still. I think I want, I'd want him doing it. <laughs> yeah. We already know who Chris wants. <laughs> well, uh, Gur uh, Gurak... Himself. Yes, yeah, he of wants course. Christopher I... Nolan or Peter Jackson. <laughs> I want Christopher Nolan, Peter Jackson, not M. Night Shyamalan. No, absolutely. I think I covered this already. I can't remember. Yeah, but uh, I think Christopher Nolan would do an amazing job. I'd put him in charge of the whole Metro Nui saga because it's, Ooh, it's his thing. That, that could work. Yeah, I mean, like, Christopher Nolan either does mo uh, modern or futuristic environment environments. Like, Interstellar, you know, great movie. Yeah, Interstellar in some ways felt uh, pretty modern. You know, it, well, it's granted, better have spaceships yeah. and, and granted, that. it's set in the future, but like the spaceships were, you know, they're not like Star Wars, where it's just so out there, you can't connect it. And that's similar to how Metro Nui feels. It feels like an actual city, but it feels like it's still kind of connected to the human concept of the city. Let's put it that way. But then, like uh, the island of Mata Nui is incredibly mystical, incredibly strange, incredibly far out there. And Peter Jackson who did something as mystical and far out there as Lord of the Rings, could do an amazing job with that. So that's what I'd do. Peter Jackson for 2001 through 2003. Christopher Nolan for 2004 through 2005. Okay. Now what about 2008? Ignition, yeah. Now I wouldn't say that, because as much as they're connected storyline, the... Areas in which they take place are so vastly different, and the, well, while you can connect 2006 and 2007, the Fantoka and Mystica are completely on their own. Yeah, I know. I, I would well, have they, a different... Well, the comic still had Ignition title. <laughs> <laughs> which I always thought sure. funny. Yeah. That's it, because it was the Mask of Life arc. That and Bionicle Legends was... The books were 2006 and onwards. Yeah. Although, uh, Radon Volcanus, that, that wasn't part of Legends. It's not just in it. Radon Volcanus, Volcan mm -hmm. Radon Volcanus, <laughs> Radon Volcanus is not, can can I can't speak again. Can't I was speak. speaking, Peterman. Alright, here's, here's a new hashtag campaign for our uh, podcast. Hashtag can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. There was. Anyways. Alright, you were saying before we all mocked you. Never mind, it's off it's off topic. Yeah, going off topic. Oh well. So who would who would you get to direct the uh, two thousand eight year? Oh, let me think. Do not say yourself. I'll do it. 
Okay, that works. Uh, Kebs will uh, direct it all. Kebs will go to uh, film school, become a film major, and direct 2008 Ooh. himself. I know. We'll get Joss Whedon to direct it. There we go. There's a, there's a suitable answer. <laughs> that makes complete sense now. Alright. I think we exhausted the directors. Let's go to production. Who would you want to produce it? Steven Spielberg. Yep. Well, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, uh, actually, yeah, he does have his own company, technically. I was thinking, like, uh, Disney, Sony, Warner Bros., Fox. Dude, no, no, what are you doing? <laughs> all Lego right. Studios, I have it. The future. <laughs> <laughs> For all Lego movies. Yep. Thing is, it's dangerous. You know, they just went ahead and did that. I have to think about it. Disney would completely destroy it. Makuda Matata. What a terrible Makuda phrase. Matata, then we could go to Lucasfilm instead, but I guess that's Disney anyway. So that yeah, work. Lucasfilm is owned by Disney now. Yeah. I stole that joke from someone else, by the way. They're probably going to start angrily knocking on the door, demanding a refund. You steal everything, Chris. Of course. But Disney would be awful. Sony would still put in product placement. I don't know why. Well, Warner Brothers is doing the other. They did the Lego movie, and that'd be great. That was great. So, yeah. Plus, also, they do, they do stuff like Arrow and The Flash, so... They know how to, they know how to do cool, action-filled stuff. <laughs> well, so does Marvel Studios. Yeah, but then Disney took over, so it's all up in the air. And look, 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 look what they look what they're doing to Star Wars Seven. It's it's bad news there, bad juju. Why? We haven't even like, seen what they've I done think in Star Wars yet. Right. Yeah, you've seen the trailer so far. <laughs> no, the first ten seconds of it were horrible. Yeah, the rest of it was okay, and the stormtroopers were good. Yeah, and the first ten seconds made me want to die. But still, it's Disney. But that lightsaber, though. That lightsaber, that lightsaber, unless it's made of, like, cortosis or something, that cross guard is going to be his downfall. <laughs> there you go. Which, yeah, it's, it's just little stuff like that that production companies do, because they think they own everything. Which, unfortunately, they do. <laughs> Caps, uh, I doubt anyone in this call except for you and I know what cortosis is. I know. Here we go. I know what we it win. is. <laughs> but... One, uh, one thing we'll get straight, Michael Bay cannot touch Bionicle, even with a 10-foot pole. That'd actually be kind of fun. That would be awful. He, he, he could do perfectly for the Mask of Life scenes whenever they're touching it. <laughs> Just boom. touch and boom. That is... No, oh, Bionicles, that's the last thing we need. Here's our other hashtag campaign. Hashtag Bayonicle. Oh my gosh. So, another question would be, how heavily should LEGO be involved? Should they be as he as involved as they were in the LEGO movie? Maybe even a little more? I don't think LEGO as a whole should be involved. They may be driving it too much toward the product. They want it to set accurate, etc. I put... Greg Farshti alone in charge, but not the Lego group um, as an entity. Yeah, that wouldn't be the best move. Maybe Greg representing Lego, but I, I don't think the Lego company would do, with all respect, I don't think they'd be doing anything beneficial. Hmm. If we had Greg telling them how stuff worked, in the Bionicle universe, what it looks like, what's canon, what's not, that would work. But Lego as a group would just be trying to push it toward their own ends, which, in the end, don't make fans happy. Yep. Plus, also, we'd end up with the new storyline instead of the old storyline. Which... <laughs> yes, that too, because they're trying to get profit. <laughs> yeah. Which, I guess it'd be fun to revisit this podcast later, once we get a lot more story, and then do the same thing. Figure out where we would where it all, it all would go. Nah, it all would go. I can't speak either. I'm the only one today. That's awesome. There we go. There can only be one. All right. And then the next fun part, which I'm hoping Leo is up for this, of course. Actors, 
Who would you get to act as characters? I think at this point, just start throwing out random Industrial characters. Industrial light and magic. Industrial light to what? Never mind. Um, let's I see. I don't think you were speaking correctly. I'd get Johnny Depp for all of them. Alright, kicking Kev's off the podcast, here we... I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, think bigger! <laughs> think much bigger! <laughs> I'm not sure, I mean, Johnny Depp is Galley? That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be something I would watch. Would anyone be able to take the Bionicle franchise seriously after that? That's the next question. <laughs> I mean, everyone, everyone's getting, everyone's getting angry that uh, Galley is narrated in the promo video by a guy. But Johnny Depp could pull off a voice in the best way possible. No, oh. no. <laughs> All right. Okay. As long as now that I've uh, ruined all of your lives for today. Excuse me while I go drop and faint. And feel like I want to die. Oh, I can't get out of my head, you terrible, terrible person. <laughs> Alright, you, you have to go to something legit, uh, legitimate this time. Right. Well, wait, why am I the only person that has to come for something legitimate? Because you are on the spot. Why can't you put Leo on the spot? Because Leo is having microphone problems. Okay. Um, let me think. Um. Hmm. Do they have to be voice actors, or can I take live action roles and shoot them into voice? Either way, I guess. <laughs> okay, um. Hmm. Everyone has their list. I think I would. Take. Oh. I don't know who I want for Tahu. Um. I think I'd put John Cleese for Liwa. Well, that'd be cool. Um. I don't know who I want for anyone else. I just kind of imagine them in their own voices that I have in my head, and none of them fit any person. Yeah, I've had that problem as well. I'm trying to figure out. I, I can't. I can't even think of anyone that I would want doing the Paraka. They would have to like have their voice put through a filter or something. That'd probably make the most sense. Um, Teradax should be James Earl Jones, totally. Um, um. Man, I'm having a hard time. I'm thinking, um, Matanui, I think, I think Matanui was done well enough in Legend Reborn. Yeah, who's the guy who did him again? I can look it up. Michael Dorn did him. There we go, thank you. Hey, hey guys. Yep. You can probably hear by the background noise, I have to go real soon, so gotta real quickly state who I would want to act, voice act. Alright, go ahead. Okay, let me think. Uh, I had this all planned in my head. Uh, Liam Neeson's Shrog of Akama. Um, uh, Benedict Cumberpatch as Kopaka. Um, no, no. Take that back. Um, uh, ooh, Vin Diesel. I, I forgot who I thought he would be a good voice for. Uh, I had this all planned in my head. Uh, maybe we'll get uh, Dean Martin to play someone. And bring in Adam Costello, too. <laughs> I know a lot of old actors. This needs to this needs to be an to. action drama thing. What uh, something like that? I don't know. All I know is that Errol Flynn needs to voice Arkstan. He's dead. Put David Tennant in a role just to laugh. Oh oh oh! Hey, I can't, I can't find one. Wait, what? David Tennant's shadowed one. No. Oh. No. His voice isn't... It, it's not low enough to be the shadowed one. No. Hey, if Benedict Cumberpatch can do a... Uh, Smaog, then he can do the shadowed one. 
And he's got the accent. The accent doesn't work with the Shattered One. Okay, then we'll get Christopher Eccleston to play Shattered One. Actually, I could go for that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be kind of okay. cool. Okay, so I'm going to say my goodbye right now and depart from you before I give you any more background noise. Sounds good. Okay, so I am saying goodbye for the final time. Whoa, you'll never see me again. Well, we don't see you. We just listen to you. Uh, how do I stop this? There we go. There we go. So there was El uh, not LQ, Leo's list. Blah. I'll have to ask LQ about his list sometime, just for fun. So, yeah, uh, you want to contest those, uh, caps? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you just, you, you're just going to surrender? <laughs> I don't feel like coming up with different actors right now for each character. I would take forever. You want to hear my I, list? I don't or? think I want Bandit Cumberbatch for Kapaka, though. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean... He's great and all, but Kapaka doesn't have that kind of voice. Yeah, I've always imagined him as, you know, kind of being... Ah, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. But, you know, he's, he's cold, he's reserved, so the voice needs to reflect that. I'll go ahead and give you my list. Some of these you'll be all... Ooh, some of these you'll be all... Seriously? But, well, that's, that's the point. <laughs> So what I'm thinking is, um, Tahu, I'd get, uh, Viggo Mortensen, who plays Aragorn. Okay, uh, yeah. I think, that, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, uh, Liwa, because you guys are trying to correct my, pro correct my pronunciation, I'd get Charlie... I prefer D Liwa, but Liwa is how people say Liwa, it. Liwa, Liwa, Lewa, tree hippie dude, I don't know. I'd get Charlie, <laughs> I'd get Charlie Day, that'd be pretty cool. Because, uh, I don't necessarily like, uh, Benny in the Lego movie, but more like, um, Newton in, uh, Pacific Rim. Okay. Yeah, you know, like, the guy with the tattoos, who wants the kaiju brains and all that. Yeah, more of that personality. Uh, Gally, I would get Jennifer Lawrence, only because of X-Men. <laughs> yeah, I think it would just work out perfectly. <laughs> uh, Onua, I would get Liam Neeson. That would just be awesome. That does fit, yeah. Yeah. I, I could see Liam Neeson doing, especially his 2008 form. Absolutely. Plus, I'm sick and tired of the uh, to of the Fire Toa getting all the uh, awesome actors. Uh, Kapaka, we debated about this earlier, but uh, I would go ahead and cast Ken Watanabe. I recognize the name. What is that? Yep. I'm trying to think of a good example of where he is. Uh, Ken Watanabe, I'm trying to think of popular movies in. He was in... I believe he was in The Dark Dark Knight. No, no. No, you know, I know who I want he, to No, um, he, he was in The Last Samurai. They shouted one now, uh, because you said that. No, no, never mind. Yeah, but uh, no, I, ble I believe Ken Watanabe is in The Last Samurai. He's pretty good. He um, yeah, he's got a, he's got a bit he's got a bit of a thick accent, but he has the perfect Kapaka tone and voice, which I think would be amazing. And then Pahatu, I'm gonna do Will Smith for Pahatu because it has to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the best. <laughs> That'd be absolutely amazing. I also picked out the six Chiraga. I was thinking mostly just uh, 2001 through 2000. Three storyline. I haven't figured out some of the Matoran, but that could be for later. Uh, for Vakama, I'd get Morgan Freeman. Absolutely. Yep. For uh, Matau, I'd get pa Patrick Stewart. Is that static in uh, agreement or static in disgust? <laughs> um, I, I don't think that fits Matau's role perfectly. Maybe another Traga. I don't know, it's your mm. list. Yeah. Uh, Nokoma, I get uh, Meryl Streep. She was, um, like, the like uh, the main leader in uh, The Giver. So I think that'd be okay. uh, per perfect vo perfect voicing there. Uh, Winua, yeah, the voices I that they did in the movie were terrible. What was that? 
the voices for Gali and Okama in the movie were terrible. Absolutely terrible. I agree. That, they, 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 remi they remind me of, like, uh... Like when, uh, when we were all little and in elementary school, there was always that one girl in the class who had to tattle on everyone. It's exactly what they reminded me of. Huh. Except, like, Gally's voice, they made it sound so... I don't know, to me it sounded too native islander, and I was like, no. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> why, why does Pohatu have this cheesy voice, and then Gally has... It doesn't sound wise, it just sounds stupid. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after I uh, give, uh, give this list, I quickly jump on IMDb and uh, see what the ratings are for the Bionicle movies. I think it'd just be funny to find out. For the rest of my list, uh, Wanua, I'd get Ian McKellen, because oh, it's going to be really cool. Uh, for Nuju, I would get a sound effect library. <laughs> yeah, so that was I kind think of. I could hire Leo's birds to play Nuju. <laughs> Leo's birds. That would be that'd be hilarious. And then let's see for Onua, I'd get Michael Caine because he has to feature in there somewhere. I tried to think of the actors that played the best awesome old people, and <laughs> yep. Well, all except for Nuju, because sound effects. And for Makuta Teradax, because I could not leave him out, Benedict Cumberbatch. Kefs is just knocked over in awe. He never thought of that. It's beautiful. It works. Perfect. I'm sorry. Who did you say for that? Benedict Cumberbatch. Um. Yeah. You do not approve, do you? <laughs> not entirely. I am sorry to have disappointed you. <laughs> so that's my entire list. All that fun stuff. And honestly, sure. I think that it'd be awesome to have just a movie series to just wrap up the whole thing. Because I found all the uh, ratings on IMDb for the Bionicle movies. Mask of Light got a 5.8 out of 10. That's pretty bad. Bionicle Legends of Metronomy yeah. got a 6.3, which is decent, but still, you know, pretty bad. Bionicle 3, Web of Shadows, got a 6.1, so you had a bit of a drop there. And final. Finally, I said Fionically, but it's finally. <laughs> Bionicle Legend Reborn got a measly 5.4. So I think it's about time we took this series and actually made it into a decent movie. So now we got this all figured out, let's go ahead and make this all happen, because, well, huh. I'm sick and tired of these low IMDb ratings. You know, who, uh, who did Bane again in uh, Dark Knight? Rises, because I was I was thinking that would be a pretty good shadowed one, especially if you did the uh, filter perfectly. And then uh, then then SW I uh, didn't he uh, do a uh, voice a while back just playing around where he did the shadow one in rap for He might have. I didn't appreciate his shadow one face as much as others may have. Yeah. Well, either way, I heard it. And I was thinking this is hilarious. No, he's not gonna act as the shadowed one. <laughs> It's funny, uh, Gurak just commented and told me that Eli- uh, sorry, LJ. I keep wanting to say J, but there's no I there. He said that LJ should be Lua. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, on behalf of Bionicle Commentary Central, uh, this is Chris Major 2124 Kepler's, and, uh, Leo. We had uh, Slicer with us, but he had to leave, so thank you, Slicer, for participating. And we would like to bid you all a good day. <laughs>